When I turned 19, I got my first credit card. I thought I could do anything. It was like I had the world in my hands. Food, movies, shoes, clothes, car. I was living my life until I had a $60,000 credit card debt. I didn't take my responsibility serious. And now, I dropped college and I worked 73 hours a week to pay my mistakes. Think twice before you swipe. Are you a victim of the harsh reality of credit cards? Are you getting lured by the promise of attractive rewards and low interest rates? Behind the facade of increased purchasing power, there is a harsh reality. The credit card industry is a dark web of persuasion, manipulation, exploitation, and finally, exhortation. Don't be a pawn in this dark game of blacks and whites. Understand this game and play it to your financial advantage before you get checkmated. In recent times, with the ability for anybody to get a credit card, shopping has become a jiffy and offers just as irresistible. People run up credit card debt for a myriad of reasons. Some don't have an ample emergency fund, so an unexpected expense like a car repair leaves them in the red. Others turn to credit cards when a lengthy crisis hits, such as a job layoff or medical problem. But there's another explanation for why some consumers take on a lot of debt. New research on present bias shows many customers are so focused on what they want now they'll use credit to get it at the expense of carrying debt. And debt is something difficult for you to come out of. This is how the trap opens. You want to buy a product or service you can ill afford. You then wonder and wonder until you get your first credit card. It all seems so enticing. Buy now, pay later, or even pay in installments for as long as needed. Soon you realize that there's no need to issue large amounts and decide to pay only the minimum required monthly to keep the credit card alive. Meanwhile, other shopping sprees are on as you compulsively walk around with the card to get things that are normally beyond your budget. And then you have online shopping too. Suddenly you see things going beyond your control. You find that the credit statement has figures that are unbelievable at first. I never bought this. And what is this bill for? You begin to fret and fume. Finally, you realize that every entry in the statement is as true as daylight. The only thing is, each entry is wrapped with interest, late payment fees, and government taxes. The lure of a comfortable living and keeping up with the Joneses seems irresistible, especially to people who don't have the cash to pay off their outstanding debt sooner or later, as the case may be. It's certainly true that credit cards are easy to use. You just swipe or insert your card, sign your name, sometimes, and away you go. It's simple, quick, and easy. However, that convenience may come at a price. Did you know that the average American household carries $6,358 in credit card debt? Credit cards are all right as long as you pay your outstanding on time or near the time. It's all right to fall back on your payments by three to four months if there are other priorities or if you're expecting some major income in the form of bonuses, loans being returned, the sale of some asset or maturity of a fixed deposit and so on. But it's not all right when you're not making monthly payments and take your commitments lightly in the long term. The important downside of not paying the dues is the high cost of interest, compulsive overspending even amidst large debts, and eventually bankruptcy. Sounds scary? Well, it will help if you understand how the whole mechanism works. Your credit score is calculated on the basis of the debt ratio. This is the percentage of credit available to you based on your legitimate earning capacity. Legitimate here means a bank account that shows the flow of income and expenses. Naturally, the higher the credit available, the lower will be the credit score. And that begins to hurt in more ways than one. Financially, of course, as your score is all messed up, and personally, it creates disarray in your life. Instead of acknowledging the trap that you're in, the credit card company will suggest that you increase your card limit to enable you to shop on more credit. This is where the real dragon wakes up. It's sometimes a point of no return because the higher the credit card limit, the more the shopping and the associated debt. And the credit daemon has a nasty tendency to outgrow the debtor. You see this amazing offer for a used car. Tired of commuting by metros and buses all this while, you decide to swipe your card for $1,000. The dealer tells you that the payment is through easy equated installments of $75 each month. You both grin, shake hands, and you drive the car home. $75 a month is nothing. I can easily clear it off, is what you conclude. 12 months later, as you look at your bank statement, you realize that things are not the same as you had imagined. Instead of $75 a month, you had been paying more. But how? Why? 
because interest on the EMI was calculated at the rate of 18% and you reneged on a few payments. You might have even got a threat from the bank who was so nice and polite to you while issuing the card. The bank might soon send bouncers masquerading as collection officers to drive away the car. Only then you realize that interest is expensive. You've been actually paying double the value of the car. You realize the hard way. You didn't have the purchasing power to buy a car, even a used one. You should have been more responsible. It doesn't help that you find the car acting up every now and then. You have to spend on repairs too, in addition to filling gas. There's another aside to this unwanted purchase. One debt gets you into another. Let us assume that you want to sell your ancestral house and get a new apartment in the city. You approach your bank for a loan for the remaining amount, but you realize that the bank is not impressed with your current and perhaps the only asset that you have. They remind you that since you had reneged on your credit card payments, your credit score has taken a hit and there was no scope for refinancing. You have to first clear off your debts to qualify for a mortgage loan or sell your house and clear all your debts and live peacefully is how one debt spirals into another. Credit works well when the balances are paid off each month, but it can be disastrous when poorly managed. The convenience, protection, and rewards offered by credit cards make them handy financial tools. But consider the risks before getting in over your head. When you see the debt mounting, you feel trapped. In contrast, your credibility is reduced. Your office colleagues have stopped lending you money. Why? Because you have been unable to clear off your previous debts. Resentment for your colleagues sets in. The psychology of debt is such that you become abusive at home and show your frustration on your wife and children. You fight over petty things and there's no peace at home. It is quite possible that your frustration leads you to drink or substance abuse. However, the good news is that you can use reverse psychology to your advantage. Once you realize the quagmire you're in, you can motivate yourself to come out of the rut and start using your credit more responsibly. Imagine how some amount of self-control can help you. Richard Toller, economist, professor, and Nobel Prize winner has this to say, credit cards have been extremely profitable to banks. They're profitable not from the fees they collect from the retailers that use the credit cards, that pays the bills, but the real profits come from the interest payments and the charges to users that are unexpected. The thing with credit cards is that there's no budget and there's no financial planning. You see something on the storefront and go to get it impulsively, feeling like a millionaire. Budgets are essential to any individual, and it's a great idea to weigh the income versus expenses and see what there is on hand. If the expenses on any given day are more than the expense, trouble awaits around the bend. While paying off debt seems boring and too low class, it is the best way to remain debt free. Careful restraint and patience can go a long way to eventual financial freedom. For all you know, you may have been able to buy that house that you've dreamed about. Credit cards can be a useful tool to build credibility and increase your credit scores. But on the flip side, they can be harmful when you rely on these cards to pay for all your expenses and fail to clear your current outstandings. It is necessary for you to have a couple of credit cards. They are useful investments to take care of emergencies like hospitalization and unexpected expenses, and for useful outcomes like paying for education. They also help you maintain a healthy credit score. But just like alcohol and driving, we must act responsibly. We must learn to live within our capacity and spend wisely. Another idea is to stop using a credit card with a larger outstanding, as the interest will be calculated on the cumulative amount. Stop using it and begin to use another card that has a lesser outstanding till you're able to clear things up. Use your card for necessary and recovering payments like house rent, electricity, gas, etc., so that regular living is not impacted. You must also be paying on time to avoid unnecessary interest. The standard and accepted rule seems that you should not spend more than 50 to 60% of your credit limit. This is to make sure that there's some balance for emergency requirements and that you're also in better control of your debts.